Hello, and welcome to this episode of Alchemist Devlog. I am Spellweaver, Lua programmer and hobbyist game developer. Previous videos on my work had a surprisingly positive response, so I decided it'd be best not to keep you waiting for as long as before. As a quick recap, Alchemist is a roguelike RPG set in a low fantasy world with focus on crafting and resource management. If you want to know more about what's already in game, please refer to the playlist I've compiled. Now let's get to the new features instead. Loot pop-up interface rework is the first thing that I did after the last update, following a very helpful piece of advice from Reddit. It used to look like this, with pop-up staying indefinitely and demanding the legendary any key button to be pressed to dismiss it, which admittedly could slow the game down if you're going through a lot of picking up. Even though I don't think this gameplay interruption was crucial, since you will probably not be looting during action field combat, new pop-up that fades out by itself is certainly less intrusive. I would also like to say that even though many of your suggestions are never going to be implemented, I take them all into consideration, especially when you identify a problem that I may have been blind to before. Seriously, thank you all very much. Now onto the main feature, game time. There is now a hidden turn tracker, incremented whenever you take an action such as move, attack, interact, drink or throw a potion. A turn is equal to one in-game minute. Game time is significantly faster than real time. Game clock, however, is more than just a way to measure turns. If you remember my last video, this forest area used to be dark and full of fireflies. Now it's not, because it's daytime and the game is finally aware of it. But if we wait for a few hours using this totally not stolen from Elder Scrolls interface, the brightness of the area changes until it's dusk and fireflies appear glowing in twilight. We can wait for a while longer to see how it would look at midnight. The effect of this day-night cycle will likely not be limited to darkness and fireflies, though it's hard to say for sure now. Waiting and taking actions are not the only ways to pass time. Crafting, for instance, takes time depending on recipe. Brewing a potion takes an hour, while making a torch only 10 minutes. Speaking of torches, with game time being tracked, I got to implement a few features that directly depend on it, for example, torches burning out. For now, the torch is in pristine condition, but if we equip it and walk around for a while, it starts to degrade. Loss of condition is shown both in text and graphically, with part of the icon becoming blackened in proportion to how much resource has been spent. When the torch burns out completely, it turns into a junk item, that can be recycled later, and another one is wielded automatically, provided you have one. It also doesn't burn out while you are waiting or crafting, by the way, since nothing really prevents you from removing it and re-equipping, and this way we avoid adding pointless busy work. Lantern works in a similar way, except it spends something luminescent instead of its own condition, and much slower. When you are out of fuel, it's unwielded. More interesting opportunity that game time brings is, of course, the possibility to have temporary and per turn effects within the game world. Fireflies have an effect of this nature, though it only happens twice per day when they appear and disappear. Burning flame, however, is both transient and very active while it's there. There are few objects in game that are capable of burning properly. But thankfully, a cellar is full of items exactly like that. When I throw a fireball potion into barrels, those of them that are empty catch fire instantly. Others just have their liquid boil and evaporate. While the fire is burning every turn, it has a chance to burn each of the neighboring tiles with exactly the same effect as that of fireball. It might scorch some moss or ignite some torches, but in case of wooden things like barrels or piles of wood, a new fire starts burning. Which means the fire can spread and quickly. Let us take some turns and see how it goes. After 5 turns, fire stops burning and turns into a pile of ash. The pile is of course lootable, as pretty much everything in this game. For now, fire is harmless, except to the environment, since damage to player isn't in game yet. Later, however, it will absolutely be a destructive force, both for player and for their enemies, especially since I'm planning on adding many more flammable objects. Dry grass, carpets, pools of oil and possibly a lot of other things. That's all I have for this update. I've been postponing making enemies and AI for quite a while now, and will probably postpone it for a while more to implement status effects and refine the dungeon generator, as well as keep updating the problematic parts of UI. I will, however, have to get to that pretty soon. Thank you very much for your time and see you again in a couple of weeks.